So my name is Olga Junarska and uh, I originally come from Poland. I moved to England five years ago and one of the motivations behind me moving here was um, first the pursuit to uh, learn bespoke tailoring and find some uh, kind of uh, professional education in that field. And I also wanted to embrace the vintage style more and discover more of the vintage scene here to be able to purchase more original antique clothing and to expand my knowledge on the topic. It started very early for me, so it originally came from my interest with uh, literature and art of the time, especially the art of the turn of the century period, uh, between the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century, the uh, so-called Young Poland movement in Polish art and literature, uh, which I found very inspiring. And from there, I wanted to know more and to expand my knowledge and get to understand that time period better. So it's been something that been, that's been changing and developing gradually over time. Uh, it started with, with the general interest in the art and then it slightly moved towards the lifestyle, the uh, social history, um, the politics of the time and so on. And it naturally moved towards fashion and finding out what people wore at the time and uh, also wanting to dress this way myself. Uh, ironically enough, when I first started, first of all, I didn't know that there were people in the world who dressed Edwardian or they dressed in vintage style every day in general. I, I thought there was nobody that had similar interests, maybe because there was nobody in my circle at the time who shared those kinds of interests. And also in Poland, unfortunately, uh, at the time, there hasn't been practically any vintage scene uh, just because, well, first of all, social media wasn't as developed as it is now back then and also unfortunately because of the uh, historical and political events that, yeah. that happened in the second half of the 20th century, um, a lot of antique clothing pieces were just destroyed or disposed of. Uh, during communist times it was considered unwelcome to dress as the bourgeois and to represent the old social structure by putting on, for example, a frock coat or a three-piece suit and so on. Growing up in Poland in the 90s, uh, it was really a matter of trying to be creative and get something that wasn't available there. So dressing up in second-hand shops was uh, quite a norm really. It wasn't considered fashionable or fancy because um, you know it, it, was, it was considered uh, something that you wouldn't be proud of because it seemed as if you couldn't afford uh, clothes for regular shops. But on the other hand there weren't that many regular shops where I lived uh, aimed towards people, targeted towards the people of my age. So if you wanted to get something really nice you really had to try to dig and be creative. I never thought I would begin to sew, to be honest. I was interested in um, fine arts and I did some um, training in like traditional oil painting and drawing and so on. Uh, so the creativity has been there, but not necessarily in terms of sewing. And also, unfortunately, in Poland there aren't any proper schools where you can learn either bespoke tailoring or um, historical costume for theatre and film and so on. There are some short courses, but let's say compared to the UK, it's, it's a completely different world. I discovered sewing pretty late, when I was already mid through my university. Um, and the more I learned, the more I figured that I really want to get better. And it started from wanting to just embrace the aesthetic of the turn of the century period and to, to dress Edwardian. But then, you know, from this first thought of wanting to live this way, it also became a need to know the craft better and being fascinated with it. Because I guess the more antique and vintage clothing you see, the more you understand the difference that is between how clothes were made back then and they are now, the difference in fabrics and quality textures and little details. And In the last few years, I really switched from 
making clothes because I wanted to wear them to really making clothes because I'm interested in making them yeah. and learning throughout the process. A while after I came to London, I found a bespoke tailoring course uh, that, first of all, much suited my needs, but also it was doable for me as an adult who had to uh, have a job as well and make a living and so on. Uh, so I did the three-year uh, bespoke tailoring diploma at Newham College in London. Uh, I just finished last summer and now I'm trying to obtain uh, some um, apprenticeship apprenticeship opportunities to be able to continue the learning process mm -hmm. uh, because um, although I've learned a fair bit by now uh, tailoring is not a craft that you can just master you know within e even within two three years it takes a really long time to, to polish your skills it's amazing that we live in a world where we can access so much knowledge we can promote uh, ourselves and our work on the internet for free which is absolutely brilliant because we have so many opportunities that people in the past haven't had I wouldn't have found out about you know anyone else from the vintage community if it wasn't for the internet I probably wouldn't have found out about those tailoring courses if it wasn't for the internet and so on but on the other hand I think it's sometimes important to maybe be a bit more self-critical. Yeah, I can do some stuff, but I'm not the same as someone who has been in the trade for 30 years and has been doing it every day since. So, so what, what is really fascinating is that once you start learning it, is that you realize how well thought through everything is. Because obviously from the outside, you see, a, you see beautiful clothing that is perfectly fitted. Um, yeah, and that's, that's why people choose it, because they want to have something that is supposed to make them look best. However, once you get into the making, I think it's, yeah, it's just realizing how, how complicated it is, but in terms of how many ingenious things people thought about throughout the well, hundreds of years of development of the craft and they are still used and it's just you know it, it, it's brilliant if you think about it and also especially as it's so much different from the ready to wear clothes or even made to measure clothing you, you see today maybe a lot of tailoring today is not as creative as for example haute couture but uh, the maker has to think creatively about how to put the pieces together to make it the most functional the way it is, so depending on the fabric, the weight, the purpose, the different detailing, the fact how how different elements are secured and um, you know how how those different little pieces can really enhance the functionality and the look of the garment a lot. I think the first garment that I made by myself was a full 1800s uh, bow ensembler. So um, it was um, an 1800s corset, uh, a shift, a petticoat and a bow gown. Uh, and I made them within quite a short time because I was about to go to some historical ball and I really yeah. wanted to have a new dress. So unfortunately, I was one of those people that, let's say, were very smart just to decide to jump straight into it and yeah. not necessarily you know start with something simpler yeah. and it, it was wearable it wasn't perfect but it was wearable um, yeah and then I just decided I had this incentive that oh I have to just keep sewing and making things and uh, really go into making full outfits rather than trying to stitch um, some some simple things at the beginning did you still have it Those yeah I do I do, although I'm, I'm not sure if I would wear it again, yeah, okay. but I, I mean, I still have the stays and I still wear them, but, and the shifts, but uh, I don't think I would wear the dress again, just because I'm, I'm very critical of how it's made now, but I was thinking about upcycling it, so I still have some fabric left, so I was thinking about turning <laughs> it into something maybe different or just like yeah. um, amending it a bit. So I really appreciate when I see someone with an interesting style and also I think with time and also by like some experience working in fashion um, I started appreciating more styles that are not necessarily my style or something I would wear or I would like but they look great on someone else. So I started 
I started liking more of, let's say, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, or even people who dress very modern by mixed different elements. You can just tell when someone has a sense of style and they understand fashion and they can pair the items yeah. in a very thought through way. And you just see that person and you want to say, oh, the, I mean, you usually approach them and I say, oh, I love your outfit, you look amazing. And yeah, it's just a nice think and a nice way to communicate with people because if they see someone else dresses in like a uh, interesting or untypical way it, it creates this kind of connection you can talk and so on especially today I think judging someone by how they dress is can be a real can be really how do you say it like a can be tricky in a way that because today's world of course there is fast fashion that it's you know it, it's a whole di disaster to the environment and working conditions of uh, the clothing maker and so on but on the other hand being able to go into this level of production erased a lot of um, clothing or fashion poverty because back in the let's say in the Edwardian era if someone was poor they couldn't afford new shoes or a coat and so on and you can tell you could tell their social status, their economic status, by the way, their dress, which also allowed for more discrimination and yeah. more oppression. Um, and also even, you know, the fact that someone couldn't afford a coat in winter and they had to suffer through that. This is just, it's unthinkable today, but that was the reality. Um, we like to forget the harsh reality and we like to focus on the pretty clothes and so on. But, you know, life wasn't great for most people then, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, and, and now you, you just don't have that. And people dress in a very, um, in, a, in a way that really doesn't allow you to tell who they are or where they're from. And I think a lot of people appreciate this anonymity, which, yeah, I think it's completely valid. Um, and I remember back then I lived in Poland, I didn't really have any friends who dressed the same way or were interested. I had people from like historical uh, costume uh, environment, uh, but not someone who dressed this way every day. Um, and yeah, and the fact that I could find some people abroad, even online and see, oh, they're actually dressing this way. Yeah. It was very motivating for, for me to see that everyone, uh, someone else is doing it as well and people are buying and you know, it just, just taking inspiration from that. Hopefully, we will get more people who are, first of all, less afraid to dress the way they want to dress and less afraid of how they will be judged by society. And second of all, more people that are aware of the environmental impact that how they dress may have and what they purchase may have. It, it's probably going to become more popular. Also probably because fashion is really tied with itself and it just keeps repeating trends over yeah. and over and over again. So, yeah.